My name is Richard Anson. I'm founder and CEO of Revu. Uh, we harness the power of consumer reviews to help shoppers buy a better product and help retailers and manufacturers sell more products. At the time, I had a real frustration. If you were shopping online, there were loads of places that told you where to buy at the lowest price, the kind of Kelkus of the world. Um, but there was nowhere really helping you with product choice. There was which, but they kind of missed a, felt like they missed a generation gap. Um, and then uh, at the same time, a good friend of mine had founded a hotel booking, online hotel booking business. And they'd seen that adding customer reviews um, basically doubled hotel booking rates. So I really took the idea that reviews would help shoppers make a better purchasing decision and at the same time sell more products for retailers and manufacturers. Uh, we had customers live um, and we had a business plan and I'd probably spent the best part of three or four months crafting this business plan, evenings and weekends. And I'd, I'd sent it to a number of very trusted, trusted individuals um, who, to get feedback and you know, come back covered in red ink, you know, prove this, you know, where's the research, where's the evidence, so we'd have to go and do some research, et cetera. So we had quite a robust business plan. And then initially, um, when I had a, a sort of initial targeted group of investors, instead of outrightly saying, look, I want some money, I'd send them the business plan and say, could I have your input? I'd really value your feedback. And that was a, a way of softly getting an intro into somebody and, um, and then the, if getting their interest. And then if they're engaged, well, where are, they'd start to say, where are you in the fundraising process? And you say, well, I've got two or three people interested. In, and it, and it, would then sort of, it would then sort of snowball from there, really. For us, it was 2000, beginning of 2005. So I stepped out of my job from KPMG in February. Um, my two co-founders stepped out of their jobs in end of March. And we, we basically worked out of our, uh, one of their front rooms um, in Greenwich and basically off garden furniture, as everyone does. And, and we sold, we basically carried on selling, selling the product and we signed up a number of customers, um, some fee paying, some not to help us trial and develop the service. And then I spent my time actually trying to secure angel funding, so meeting lots of angels, uh, having coffees with them, um, selling the idea. And then we closed, that was about March time, and we closed the angel round in, in uh, June, of it was a £750,000 round that then gave us the kind of, the, if you like, the initial capital to really go on and, and, build, and start to build the business. So in the very, very early days, I worked very closely with one of, our, uh, one of our advisors, who was also an investor, and he and I went out to visit, visit, all, visit a number of um, potential customers. It was basically wearing out shoe leather. There was no other way. It was very much direct sales. So um, either he or I would send a cold email in, we'd follow it up with a cold phone call, um, and we would then go out and meet them. And it was just, it was, a, it was an out-and-out -out sales job. Um, it was great fun, actually. Really, really enjoyed it. And, and, and we used to have... We used to have cold calling afternoons in the office. So when we just raised angel money, we had two or three beta customers and the product worked and we had, we had very early revenue coming in, but it was right, we need a lot of other customers. And I think we had one salesperson in the office. So we literally made afternoons in the business where everybody, developers, operations, we all got on the phone and kind of developed a competition to generate leads by our cold calls. And it was a kind of way of getting everyone involved and, and not make, and, and you know, not having that one salesperson feeling, oh, I'm the only one making cold calls and it's really awkward. Because actually, if everyone starts to do it, it starts to become quite fun. There's an inherent brand awareness, I guess, in, our, in the business model. So if you are on Sony's website or, or Dixon's website, you see Revu and you see the reviews on those, on those sites. So you're seeing Revu when you're out shopping in the marketplace. Um, we also uh, did some search, do, still do some search engine uh, advertising on Google and their, and their pay-per-click. Uh, we always make sure that's ROI positive though, so it's not really a sort of brand splurge. It's very much if we pay for traffic, we make sure that that, that makes a return for us. Um, and we've used PR, and we're starting to use PR more really to, to try and drive awareness in the minds of the consumer. Over the first two or three years of the business, we spent most of our time focusing on what we, what, what we call our review mark service, which is the business-to-business -business service. So it's powering the retailers and manufacturers' websites. Very much if you were to buy a digital camera from Dixon's, 
we send you a co-branded email about two to four weeks after you've bought that product. You fill out a review. If I bought the same camera from Jessup's, I'd fill out a review and we then take that, that review and we aggregate it to create a kind of independent basket of reviews and then re-syndicate or redistribute it, if you like, onto all the retailers and manufacturers' sites on, and onto review.com. And in the early days, we just focused purely on, on meeting their needs. And review.com itself was a, uh, probably not the right word to say publicly, it was sort of a dumping ground. It didn't look very pretty. There was just lots of content. It wasn't very nav 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 navigatable. Um, and it's only really in the last two and a half years that we put a lot of effort into review.com and making it the, the site it is today, which um, you know, if you know, if you if you've got a sort of short list of three or four products, I really believe it's one of the best places now to go and choose an electrical product. As our business model is very much one of distribution, so at the heart of our business we have review.com, and then we basically distribute our, our the verified customer reviews to retailers and manufacturers' websites. And we make money by uh, charging a license fee to retailers and manufacturers for that service by putting the review reviews on their website and they see an increase in sales. We monitor that increase in sales and the license fee re reflects that increase in sales. So that's one way we make money. The other way is if you come to review.com to make a product choice and then click through to a retailer and buy at a retailer, we'll get commission from that retailer. Straightforward at the heart of it is reviews increase sales. So we, you know, we put tracking on we put tracking on people on, on on businesses websites, and we basically see people who read reviews are roughly, uh, on average, say two hundred percent more likely, so twice as likely to to buy a product. And if you if you if you do all the numbers and follow it through, you get you get about a, a ten percent increase in conversion um, on a, on a website. So that's a direct increase in sales. And the review model, though, is much, much more. It's about increasing your sales on your site, but also providing you with really high quality traffic from, from review.com, much higher than you'd get from any of the price, the price comparators. When I talk about quality, people who are really ready to buy, rather than just, just, just a visitor who's going to visit your site, you'll pay for it, and they'll leave. Um, and the other, the other side is, 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 is one of which we're very different to the market, is we, we, we talk a lot about the verification, the fact that every review is from a genuine shopper, someone who's actually bought the product. And the, the importance of that is it really protects and enhances your brand as a retailer. Uh, so you can't have any spin or spam. Your competitors can't write on your products. But it's also, it's also showing your shoppers that these are genuine reviews. Because you're, as, a, as a retailer or a, a manufacturer even more so, you're in conflict. These are your products. Well, why shouldn't you write your own, own reviews? There's a real buzz around, around social media. And, and we're seeing, we're, we're enabling people to, to post reviews to their Facebook pages, to their Twitter accounts, et cetera, so that you can start to, the shopper can start to broadcast wider what they think about the product and around service, which is great for, 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 for brands and for retailers. Um, we're also, we've just, we've just launched something with Sony that allows basic consumers to consume a conversation so that a consumer can ask another verified owner a question. And the questions that are coming back are, 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 fanta are fantastic. I bought this digital camera, how do I manage to uh, actively engage the aperture control and then the owner will write back. And what's really interesting there is we, we, uh, we engage it via Twitter and we also test it via email. And uh, the response rates of both have been good, but email response rates are still vastly higher than, than, uh, than Twitter. So the, 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 old school, the old school forms of communication such as email, et cetera, um, are still relatively powerful in you know, the main public's mind. It's with the rise of smartphones now that um, I just think the opportunity is enormous. The challenge lies in, um, in really how do you monetize it effectively in that I think you, know, you can see behavior even today where people, people carrying out that research on their phone um, but enabling them to actually buy through it. And um, you, can, you, know, you can see analogies where people will clip out coupons from a newspaper and go and take it in store and that's, that's probably the way to do it by coupons on the phone. Um, so yeah, it's hugely exciting. It's just an extension of the web, really. In terms of for the future, and um, and if we look at sort of exit, um, you know, there's a number of there's a number of number of aspects that make review very attractive, and we're not we're not ready to exit yet, but um, or, or to even 
you know, even, even consider it. But um, one is the fact that we have a, a great understanding of shopper behavior. So we now already have a, a million un reviews from verified shoppers across around 75,000 electrical products. Um, we, are, we are on the way to creating a very trusted brand in terms of uh, buyer behavior. And it's very easy to see how that can move across other verticals. You can move it across financial services, you can move it across auto, et cetera. Um, and, uh, and, and, and the third is just the sort of geographical footprint. So I think it makes it very attractive and I think the impartiality um, we're seeing more and more is that brands are recognizing they, they're having to, having to um, communicate with consumers in a transparent fashion. And I, I almost see us as trans impartial, but transparency is, is probably the buzzword or the watchword really for us.